Good evening. Will the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, November 20th, 2019, please come to order. For the benefit of those who may not have participated in a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, our procedures are as follows. One, the secretary will read the legal call of the meeting. It's published in the local newspapers. Two, the applicant will be invited to come forward and present the case, explain to the commission and others present what is being requested of this property. Comments of town agencies will be read for each application if there are any. There will be clarifying questions from the commissioners. Then there will be the opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. First, those who wish to support the application may come forward. Second, those who oppose the application will then be invited to come forward. As this is a public hearing, it must be recorded as necessary for speakers to identify themselves, state their name and address before addressing the commission. For the applicant is then free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearing and the regular meeting, at which time the commission will try to reach a decision on each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decision of the commission and has the right to appeal to superior court if desired. Five decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the Planning and Zoning Office, 453-8039, after 9 a.m. Seated this evening are the following members, Sean Cosgrove, um, Scott Edmonds, Richard Wallace, I'm Phil Johnson, Alan Brown, Jason Marchi, and Frank D'Andrea. Uh, town staff is George Crawl, our town planner, and our recording secretary is Lisa Piombino. The videographer this evening is Peter Schultz. The secretary will now read the legal notice, but given the secretary is not here, will you do that for us, Richard? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Legal notice, Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on November 20th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at location Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, in the Mononcatuck Room on the second floor for the following purposes. J.J. Sullivan, 229 River Street, Map 39, Lot 12, Zone C4, Coastal Area Site Plan and Site Plan Revision <coughs> for Site Grading and Retaining Wall, Plumbing and Electrical Upgrades Associated with an Expansion of Containment Area for a 200,000-gallon tank for heating oil storage. Copies of these applications are available for inspection at the Planning and Zoning Office, Town Hall South, 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut, at this, per this meeting. Persons may be heard and written communications will be received. Dated at Guilford, Connecticut, 29th day of October, 2019. Philip Johnson, Chairman, I believe this has been booked. Yes, that item has been tabled to December 18th. Um, so our first public hearing, which is a continuation from our last meeting, is Michelle Ladano. 18 Graves Ave, map 40, lot 18, zone R1, special permit application per section 273-13C to change one non-conforming commercial slash industrial use to another non-conforming use as a two-family residence in an R1 zone for a total of three residential units on the property. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Scott, come on. Thank man. you very much. Thank you. Snag. Um, do you want to explain? This, this is the professionally developed site plan. If you would. Yeah. Uh, in mean, the last meeting, if right. I recall, we left and you wanted the elevation plan and everything put on hold. Sorry. Could you just, again, sorry. restate your name and address? Oh, just sorry. Okay. My physical address well, or the address where, that we're. Where you reside? Oh, uh, Michelle Ladano, 250 Killingworth Turnpike, Clinton, Connecticut. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I mean, that's. Bad. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, when we concluded the meeting, the last meeting, um, I left with the duty of getting the elevation plan. So I hired Ron to do our elevation plan, Scott Design of Brantford, and he also prepared the uh, site plan to scale. So I believe what you have actually requested of me is now 
fulfilled. Um, George, is there anything we need to be especially? No, if you recall at the last meeting, you uh, voted not. The motion to waive the requirement for a professionally prepared site plan was defeated. Right. So we left. We, we were left with uh, either. Uh, we were left with the idea that we should encourage the applicant to comply with that requirement, which she's done. She's retained um, uh, Mr. He's got his Zocher, Zocher uh, yeah. to uh, prepare the site plan, and he's also prepared a. <clears throat> an elevation uh, photo simulation, which was also part of your discussion. Um, these were these were items that were also requested by several neighbors and the Historic District Commission. I think they've already explained the site plan and how everything works. It's now drawn to scale by a licensed professional. Uh, and I believe the elevation um, speaks for itself. Um, you have addressed some of the comments, at least of the Historic District Commission. I didn't review them that completely, but it looks like you've done a pretty good job. If you, might, you want to talk about the elevation, please do. Um, sure. My name is Ronald Zocher. I'm an architect in uh, Frankfurt, and I think I've been before you gentlemen, maybe not the same gentleman, but before you before. Um, yeah, well, the concept was basically to make as little impact on the building as, make as little impact on the building, straighten it out, make it more desirable. The finished colors are pretty much what um, is in keeping with the house in front. I think that was what the Historic Commission required. Um, we're open to any kind of comments. Um, that's pretty much it. We haven't changed the skin that much. Are you dealing just with the exterior and the elevation, or will you be dealing with the design of the interior of the, the apartments? I would hope so. Uh, <laughs> Most likely, I will be become involved. They, they, they're going to have to have a set of uh, um, working drawings for the building department because it isn't just a simple renovation. It's a change of views, da da da, all the way down the line. So it has to meet code. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. therefore, there will be architectural drawings done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, good question. Yes. And it's not, it's just really for my edification. Do you know what the setbacks are on the yeah. on. side of the building? And what they are? Yeah. Now. Correct. Or what they should be. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're distant from what they should be, but that's um, fine. Uh, all right. Um, if I could walk you around it. Yeah. It's, it's really tight. Yeah, yeah it's about two feet. You hear it's about two feet, there's about uh, three or so, you go from roughly five to around eight, <laughs> and that's it. Are there any code requirements that you're aware of if you're within three feet of a building line? Um, I looked it up. Um, Not that it's relevant. I'm no, just no, it is relevant. Trying to make sure that you I'm know. Gonna, I have to deal with that with the building department. Right. I, in fact, I came fresh out of the uh, state building code. I looked it up uh, first in the commercial, basically the international building code for large structures. And um, there there are requirements for our rating, limited the amount of windows that can be in relative distance to property lines, the whole 10 yards. In the residential code, which is what this will fall into because it will be considered as a one and two or two family home. All right. In that category, there are no restrictions. So uh, the uh, building department and I will have discussions, I would assume. <laughs> 
fair enough. Any other questions? You just you're happy with uh, space for cars, I think. Uh, oh yeah, they're turning there's and more all. than enough. The okay. turning radius is there's uh, enough for three cars inside oh. the garage. And then you've got at least one in the front on that leg. Plus, um, there's a, there probably could be another one parked in, in, in the slower section. So there's more than sufficient drive around. Are there any clarifying questions from the audience? I know we don't have a real big audience. <laughs> I'll go first. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry I'm late. I'm uh, Andrew Moran. If you could come up to the mic, sure. that would be great. Thanks. So, I'm uh, It's not, it's actually, it's just for the TV, so everyone can hear you when they watch. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew Moranker, I am uh, uh, live at 28 Graves Avenue. I apologize for being late. I haven't been in the, uh, no, no. your presentation. Uh, so, um, I mean, my main question was, uh, was this the, the professional plan that was, that was sought for and that and has been executed? And so you are being provided with the information that, uh, that, that you need. So that's great. Uh, and the second, the second component I had was um, you're being, it's my understanding, you are being asked to uh, consider a, a um, all this language, this non one non-conforming to another non-conforming. A lesser non yeah. Unless they're not conforming, uh, my understanding is that this that the, uh, the uh, had the property gone from light industrial the property stayed at light industrial uh, when it was sold uh, that this was uh, grandfather would automatically revert to to residential that that was a, that this was a grandfather provision uh, is that is that not correct? I think that any nonconformity go with the land, so it's not it really isn't triggered by any type of a sale. In terms of reverting, no. But this, with this particular, with this particular property, this was this was the read we had from the whatever documentation. The right to use the building and the property uh, as a non-conforming use doesn't go away merely by change in ownership. The only thing that makes it change is either the applicant requests a change and that change is approved. If this is approved, changed to residential, then it can't go back to industrial. Can't again. go back to industrial. Uh, but the mere fact that the property might be sold from one person to another does not absolve the rights of that pertain to the nonconformity. Okay. So what what the commission has to find, make a finding of, is that the new <coughs> nonconforming use, which is a, really three three dwelling units on one lot, is less nonconforming more compatible with the neighborhood than what was there before. That's the finding they have to make. That's, that's the finding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Um, Anyone want to speak in favor of the application? Ron, I don't see a date on your little drawing here. Can oh, I, I'm so sorry. Can I put today's date on it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, would anyone like to speak against? Uh, with no comments, either for or against, would someone like to make a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Very good. Um, should we just handle this one while we're here? Before yeah, sure. we have to act yeah. on it, anyhow. Good. <laughs> um, or to table that public hearing to 12, 19, 18 on J.J. Sullivan. Not yet. Oh, but I will. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll make the motion. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit application per section 273-133 from Michelle Ladano, 18 Graves Avenue, Map 40, Lot 18, Zone R1, to change from a non-conforming industrial use in rear building to multifamily residential. Three units total, two units rear building, one unit in the front building as detailed in the following. From, I would say from the plans. From the plans and drawings submitted. From the plans of Ronald's off. And also reference the application dated 916. And the special permit application dated 916, 2019. Drawings by 
Ron, pardon my pronunciation, so of, of dated today to 1120. The application is approved with the following conditions. One, that the new two-family building contain no more than three bedrooms based upon recommendation of the health director. And this application is approved based on a finding that it is based upon the design of the renovated barn. The use will no longer, will have no greater injurious impact upon the surrounding residential neighborhood than the existing use. The special permit is effective November 29, 2019, and upon filing with the town clerk. I will second that. Discussion? I think. I think if this was here, first meeting, I think it probably would have. Yeah, good job. It looks great. Thank you. I Sorry to understand what I'm voting on. Pain. Yeah. No. I think all the neighbors that had comments would have. Right. Probably just, you know, from a process standpoint, if the code requires us to have it we really need to have a really good reason to waive it so th I appreciate the extra expense associated with it uh, and thank you for the extra effort you put in um, call the vote. Any, any more discussion no um, I'll call the vote all in favor hold the vote yeah. Yeah. and what was the second part there was you have to no the special permit becomes effective when you file with the town clerk. Okay. 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 I, 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 I suspect that you day can't after Thanksgiving get any type of building permits until you filed. Correct. You'll get a doc. You'll get a document from Lisa in the mail, which you then take to the town clerk's office and file. Okay. And then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Have fun. Thank you. All right. Um, Motion to the table to this all then to 12, 18, 19. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, we do the public hearings, regular meeting, pending applications. Robert Mangino, architect, owner, PDC, LLC, Boston Post Road, Map 78, Lot 13, Zone TS2, site plan modification to allow for sale of landscaping materials, including tractors and tools. Extension granted to 115. Uh, new action. Yes. Uh, table or? Yeah, table. Or approve the extension. So you approve the extension or table? Both. You should do public table to the 15th. Yeah. Uh, so January, January here. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, new application scale. Magnet Zubal, 267 Old Teaching Ted Road, Map 8, Lot 32, Zone A5. Coastal site plan for construction of freestanding wooden deck with partial pergola receiving set public here and date for 12 18 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, with the mandatory referral is what? to the Board of Selectmen. They uh, want to convey a conservation easement on a portion of the property. It's generally known as Peddler's Park to the Guilford Land Conservation Trust. Um, the Guilford Land Conservation Trust is paying the town $25,000. And the town will give up the right to develop that portion of the, of the uh, Peddler's Park area. Um, that's identified as lot 13, assessor's map 72. This was an issue I think that came up at the time that uh, was disc proposed golf, as disc golf there, and there was a lot of neighborhood opposition. Mm -hmm. And the land trust maintains trails adjacent there and actually on the town property. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the first selectman um, negotiated this deal with the land trust, and they will pay the town $25,000. That's a lot of land, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't identify the total acreage. I don't know what the size of the parcel is. More than twenty-five thousand dollars, I can tell you that. But the town has no intention of developing it for anything. This well, it's will also, it's also. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how long ago this occurred, but it also was a maybe not formally a town dump, like a private but, dump. Yeah, but there was, was a dumping the, site. It was the original stump dump. It was. <clears throat> this $25,000 will go into the land acquisition fund. Well, hopefully the selectmen know what they're doing. So, uh, 
Mandatory referral of Board of Selectmen at its November 18th meeting recommended the Planning and Zoning Commission under CGS 8-24, the granting of a conservation easement to the Guilford Land Conservation Trust, Inc. for the sum of $25,000 over the property known as Peddler's Park, shown on lot 13 on Assessor's Map 72, and more particularly described in certain deeds recorded in volume 113 at page 345 in Guilford Land Records. Um, so they're not giving them the land, they're just granting a conservation easement? Well, the town is saying we're not going to develop it, and they're granting to the land conservation trust the ability to enforce that easement. So the, the gist of the easement is we will not develop it for any kind of active recreation or any other. So the town you know, still maintains the, the town still owns it. property. Yes, it's, and uh, I don't know who if the land trust maintains the trails or not. They probably do. Does does, does this lot adjoin or abut? I think it does. Somebody, it, does it adjoins the state trail. forest, yeah, which is part of the whole Westwoods complex thing. So it makes sense. The land trust wouldn't do it. It was just a little isolated right. island of land. Oh, the fact that they're giving the town $25,000 is somewhat unusual. I don't remember this ever happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Well negotiated, Matt. Um, <coughs> uh, someone like to, I, I made, I'm not even sure, we just a vote on it. No, we read the letter. I'll make a motion to vote it that the Gilbert Planning and Zoning Commission approve the mandatory referral in accordance with 8-24 of the Kinetic General Statutes for the granting of a conservation easement to the Guilford Land Conservation Trust on Lot 13, such as Map 72, known as Peddler's Park. Discussion? I mean, if they don't plan to develop it, and they got $25,000 out of it. Yeah. I mean... I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Uh, I read the minutes and they appear to be substantially correct. Yeah. Someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. With no... Abstained. Do we have any bills or anything? Nope. No? Okay. With no further business before the commission? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Happy you for your 23 minutes. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Do you have a